gentlemen, I suggest um, we start. Uh, it's one o'clock Central European time. Uh, well, five minutes late. Um, I think that most of us now managed to get into this webin uh, this webinar. Um, so welcome to this webinar. Uh, this is the last one in a series of a whole week webinars in the European distance learning week organized by Eden. Um, my name is uh, Wim van Petegem. Um, I work at the University of Leuven. Um, my domain is learning technologies. Uh, I'm an engineer and I'm supervising uh, a couple of PhD students for the moment. Uh, I used to be vice president research in Eden and so it's my pleasure to, uh, to moderate this uh, webinar uh, for you. Um, Christina, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. The topic of this uh, webinar is uh, how can the Eden Network support PhD students and research? Uh, after a successful uh, PhD symposium uh, at the latest, uh, uh, the last, sorry, uh, Eden Research Workshop in Barcelona, uh, I think that this is a very nice continuation of uh, the discussion we have started there with PhD students and supervisors. Um, and I'm happy uh, that uh, we could have a very strong panel today uh, that will give their thoughts and, and ideas uh, about this very important topic uh, for the Eden Network. Um, we have Antonio Texera, uh, who is from the University Aberta from uh, Portugal. He is uh, the former president of Eden and, of course, an Eden senior fellow. Um, we have Albert Sangra, who is from the University of Berta de Catalunya, where the uh, PhD symposium took place uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he is also a supervisor of many PhD students, and as he uh, mentioned in the chat box, he is currently the director of the uh, UNESCO Chair in Education and Technology for Social Change uh, at his university. We do have Margarita Teresa Vecchiene from uh, Vitotas Magnus University in Lithuania. Uh, also, she has uh, some uh, PhD students. Uh, her topic is adult learning and technology enhanced learning. Uh, so she can bring in uh, that, that perspective as well. Um, we have Deborah Arnold, uh, who is also very uh, familiar to, to many of us uh, as an Eden Senior Fellow uh, and very much involved in, in, in the Eden organization. Uh, but she has been specially invited for this session as a PhD student herself uh, at the uh, Open University in Catalonia. And then last not, but not least, we also have uh, Nilsa Costa. Uh, who is trying to connect, I think. Oh, she is connected. Uh, she is from the University of uh, Aveiro. And uh, she also has uh, in supervising PhD students uh, in Portugal and in uh, Portuguese-speaking countries all over the world, especially in Brazil and Mozambique, Angola, and others. Uh, I think so we have a very strong panel uh, for today. Um, and we will tackle five questions. Um, First, we would like to start with uh, addressing the needs and aspirations of PhD students themselves. Um, then we will try to see how we could help and support them in, in achieving their goals um, in, in general. And then we will focus a bit more on how our community as an Eden network, uh, we could empower them uh, while they are um, executing their, 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 their research. Um, and then uh, we would also reflect on how the Eden Network could be used as a platform to test new ideas or to share the findings uh, that these PhD students uh, uh, have with their research. 
And then as last question, uh, we would also th try to think about how the network can benefit from the work uh, that the researchers are doing. Uh, and especially as this is an open and uh, distance learning week, uh, we will reflect on how that could fit in, uh, in the theme of, uh, of, of this week as well. And by the, at the end, uh, we will have our president, uh, Irina, uh, explaining a little bit uh, how uh, research uh, is, is on the, very much on the agenda of the Eden Network in the coming years. Uh, so um, I will not speak too much. Uh, we will uh, introduce each question uh, by one of the, the panel members, um, and uh, then uh, the other panel members will have some time to react on uh, um, on, on that introduction um, and give their viewpoints. I invite all the participants uh, to write their questions in the chat box uh, so that they can uh, that I can see the, the, the questions coming in. Uh, depending on how many questions we will have, uh, I will interrupt uh, at a certain moment uh, and and give some time for questions. Uh, or we have uh, questions at the end of the session that will be that will depend a little bit on the the interactivity that's going on online. Uh, okay. All in all, we will try to finish in time, um, and uh, we have uh, this scheduled until two thirty. Um, so bear with me that we will uh, make it uh, a very interesting session. Thanks uh, and and welcome to all the participants. Uh, I see now we have. 12 uh, participants uh, from different countries. Uh, I'm very glad to see that uh, we have PhD students involved. Uh, so uh, I think that, uh, well, for these PhD students, this is your webinar. Uh, take your chance uh, to also uh, raise your voice and, uh, and, and ask questions uh, or give suggestions how we as a network uh, could uh, become uh, better and, and more supportive uh, for uh, you as important researchers. Uh, okay, I think we can start then with uh, the first question, and that is uh, thinking about uh, the needs of PhD students uh, and thinking about uh, what, what 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 are these uh, PhD students thinking of a network as Eden, or what do they okay, expect, uh, or much, what then. what are their um, ambitions, yes, aspirations it's, it's an in general? Position for me and as I said, I'm here. very happy uh, that uh, one student, of the panelists myself, is a PhD student herself, uh, and, and so I would give the floor to Deborah to uh, introduce uh, uh, this topic. So uh, I was trying as I said, to uh, I will then go together. on with uh, um, the other all, uh, panelists uh, for reactions first. In answer to this question, how can we address Deborah, these the floor is aspirations yours. of PhD students? It got me thinking that, um, well, there are very different types of PhD student who are going to have very different needs. Um, and so we can be following on from master's degrees and be quite young, or like myself, we could be coming into doing doctoral studies in later life after having um, had a certain amount of professional experience. And I think there are challenges um, relating to uh, to that. Um, PhDs can be part-time, full-time, residential. Uh, we're talking about distance learning PhDs as well. Um, Gender issues, I think, come into account in um, defining the needs, socioeconomic background, and there are many other aspects. So I think it's not a case of one size fits all, as we say in education very frequently. Um, and thinking more about this, there are also different types of PhDs, but we won't go into that here. Um, I think we're looking at the different types of students. Uh, so some of the thoughts that I'm going to be sharing with you here um, come from personal experience and reflect my own reflection on that. Um, also from my participation in two PhD symposia now, including uh, the recent one um, in, in Barcelona organized by Eden, um, as Vim said a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so conversations with peers that I've had during those events. And I also went to look at the literature on needs and aspirations of PhD students because we're researchers and because there's a whole subfield out there uh, dealing with this, with um, uh, identity, experience, engagement, disengagement, and so on. So I think we could perhaps share some links relating to the literature on that afterwards. OK, so I thought the focus here would be uh, looking at issues beyond what a doctoral student addresses 
or should address with their supervisor because we're looking at what a wider scholarly community like Eden can provide um, by way of support. So if I can move on now. Um, I looked at different types of needs, as I said, from my own experience and from the conversations uh, and from the literature. So in this part, while I'm talking, I'm just going to focus on the needs. I've suggested some solutions here, but I'll be inviting the other panelists to come in um, and see whether these are feasible, reasonable from the Eden point of view. Um, I think what a lot of us feel is that we have a need to gain confidence as a researcher um, uh, from the, the content side, from the methodology side, but also just becoming part of the community. Um, and I think uh, that there is a lot to be offered by a, a community such as, such as Eden. Um, on the academic side, there's also the need to refine our theoretical knowledge and methodology. Um, over and above, as I said, uh, the, the in-depth work that we're doing with our supervisors. And of course, we already have this very, very strong academic need to get published. Um, and I'd like us to discuss later ways that Eden can support us PhD students in getting published. If we move on, we also have material needs as PhD students. Um, especially, uh, well, anybody needs to have some kind of income while they're studying. Um, I don't know if this is a question for Eden, uh, but it is definitely an issue. Um, it's a long period of our lives when we're devoting uh, all or some of our time to studying, and uh, so we need to meet those material needs. There's also the very, very concrete aspect of um, attending conferences. If we want to get out there confronting our research with uh, the rest of the community and hearing about the state of the art and, and, uh, and what's going on and making those networks, then we have to be able to attend conferences. Um, and here we can raise the issue of virtual conferences, which are very, very good um, webinars like this for reaching out. But um, from experience, we know that these do have limitations in that the whole social aspect of making connections and becoming part of the community is not necessarily um, addressed to the full by virtual conferences. And another thing that I've been confronted with myself is having access to specialist tools, survey instruments, data analysis software. Um, and a lot of the stuff here has a cost. Um, not always supported by the host institutions, the institutions where we are um, enrolled as students. Um, and so here I will make a concrete suggestion for Eden, which I think is also uh, within, the, um, within the philosophy of Eden. And I thought, why doesn't Eden support, further support, the development and dissemination of robust open source solutions in terms of research tools? That's just an idea that I'll put on the table um, for us to perhaps discuss later. Um, so we've looked at academic needs, we've looked at material needs, and um, I thought that there were also, and, and this is also covered um, a lot in the literature that I mentioned earlier, past, what I call pastoral needs, um, the whole motivation, self-motivation aspects. Um, uh, there's a lot about um, uh, published about depression among uh, PhD students, um, but I think Put, putting here, maintaining motivation, overcoming loneliness. Um, and some of us have talked about imposter syndrome. Um, I know it happens, happens at any stage uh, in, 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 one career, in one's career, but I think that's something that PhD students are very, very um, conscious of, that do we have our place in the community? Um, are we solid enough as researchers uh, to join this community? Um, and I think a lot of us need a lot of reassurance here and, and some coaching um, and so on. So I haven't dealt with the more serious aspects, as I said, um, uh, here, because I, I don't think that is something that, uh, um, uh, that we would actually ask Eden to, to provide. But the supportive community, I think, is a very, very important issue. And the last point 
here is on the possible aspirations because the, the, the question was on needs and aspirations. Um, and here I was very, very pragmatic. Uh, I think uh, for PhD students, the main aspiration is getting a job. It can be in academia or it could be outside academia. We continue okay. to need to get published, of course. Um, and looking at the big picture, um, how do we deal with our aspiration to change the world? OK, so I'll close here and, uh, and let the uh, other panelists uh, um, ad address the, the other questions, which I hope will serve in some way to answer some of these. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Very interesting and inspiring ideas. Uh, I, I, for myself, um, summarize them as, as a, 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 a need for, for, for networking uh, a lot. And, and so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, the, the other panelists uh, can, can elaborate on that as well. Uh, so um, if, if, if uh, you allow me, Albert, uh, can I ask well, you, because you're all, uh, well, Deborah's supervisor, uh, and maybe you could uh, give your you first comments uh, webinar, on, on, on Deborah's I'm thoughts? Very pleased to collaborate in this Eden do you event. agree, or do you have um, additional things well, uh, to say? Or I, I, I uh, fully agree, that, and uh, I have to say is, that it's is just maybe not correct, the case uh, that in this webinar, both uh, Deborah and myself are together in the sense that uh, she's a very, Robert? very, very good PhD student because she's a very good researcher too. So uh, I don't, I, I could not be uh, in, uh, in any kind of uh, contradiction with uh, what she has said because I agree mainly on all the elements and the clear approach uh, and, and picture she, she has uh, she has had, she has done. I, I, I probably only would uh, distinguish or, or consider uh, a fact that is, uh, if we look at, uh, so I, I fully agree on the aspirations, and the only thing is that regarding the solutions, I think that there are two kind of big uh, blocks of solutions. Those to which we will need some funding, some money and those that we probably would not will not need it. So the thing is that sometimes those solutions that are related to some particular funding are usually more difficult to be developed and we know that, we know that. And probably our association uh, does not have a lot of money to allocate to this, uh, to this end. But at the same time, I think this is a very good idea in the sense that maybe for the developments of the association could go in the way of finding uh, partnerships or sponsorships that could facilitate or that could help the needs that the PhD students have regarding this need of funding for some particular activities. The other part, the, the one that... Didn't, Sorry? Right, right, right. So, so no, no, I, I, I think that there are the, the yep. ones that uh, a PhD student can, can, can have. Yeah, I think yeah, Albert. Uh, uh, we will exactly. certainly come back to the solution. Uh, we will certainly come back to the solutions uh, later on in the webinar. Uh, so, uh, if if you would allow me to to ask if you could just focus on 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 the needs and aspirations. Uh... Well, thank you very much, Vim, and let me also um, uh, well say hello to everyone now in a, a more formal yeah. uh, way. And thank you for the invitation to yeah. be part of okay. this. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So, so uh, 
Uh, Antonio, uh, would you like to add something uh, um, well, to this uh, uh, list uh, uh, of, of needs and aspirations uh, students uh, you think that and, PhD uh, students still, have? Still am. So um, I can uh, uh, more or less uh, follow um, uh, Deborah's um, um, already uh, Deborah's remarks and uh, what Deborah has already uh, pointed out. I would say uh, probably, well, mm, uh, in relation to what she has already stated, that mm, an organization as Eden, uh, because of its uh, large outreach and its large history as well, represents a legacy of the field. And in that sense, uh, it is so broad that it can support um, the, the students and the supervisors and the community in that sense and the, and the uh, institutions themselves, uh, the institutions that award the PhDs, um, can assist in the different stages of the of the process. So, uh, starting from identifying what is the best uh, university to enroll in, for instance, what is the best program to to conduct uh, my research, um, also to select the topic, and additionally, uh, in in the phases uh, phases of the development of the research. Uh, to find uh, the people to conduct surveys, to um, also to exchange ideas, to um, test these ideas. I'll come back to that uh, later on. Uh, and also the part of the dissemination, as Deborah has already pointed out. And finally, also how these as can be um, transformed in, I mean, these can be uploaded in a sense to the knowledge cycle and can be these uh, the output of the of the phd uh, research can be useful for the community can be used by by the by the practitioners and can in that sense uh, influence the the improvement of the practices themselves so in all of these uh, elements of the knowledge cycle and all of these uh, moments of the process an organization as even can contribute how um, just to be as brief as possible um, because it provides a large network of contacts, a large nectar, uh, uh, network of actors and players and practitioners and academics, and also um, because of that, um, a, a large, um, uh, um, a large set, uh, uh, a large repository of ideas, of uh, um, also of theory of practice that can be used um, in, in the in the um, in the research process itself. On the other hand, just to, to finish up, there's this element that um, Deborah um, pointed out, which is the cultural element in a sense. So to, to, being, uh, to, to feel as being part of a community and of a legacy and a, of a certain cultural environment, and the element of scalability that uh, an organization as it can give to the, to the students themselves and the supervisors uh, is, is very it's very important also to overcome this um, feeling of loneliness that can be sometimes uh, a little bit um, difficult to, to to tackle with okay thank you um, my experience is different from previous speakers because, uh, you know, our institution is um, the Okay, thank you, Antonio. Um, I will quickly go to Margarita uh, if in, in she has something network. to add or if she and, simply uh, agrees with what has been I said so far. I uh, several times in, in uh, conferences and research workshops, you know, and also my doctoral students. So I found that um, <clears throat> Uh, really, it's, it's a great uh, opportunity to be there uh, because of the partnership, because of ideas and the several things that uh, the needs, aspiration that um, Deborah already mentioned, um, yes, it, it could be solved in different ways. You know, not only uh, the proposed ways, maybe, you know, in some other possibilities. But when we use uh, uh, partnership, when we see how many um, potential of research is coming to these uh, um, conferences and research workshop, it's really uh, the power for young researchers. And uh, I agree uh, absolutely that it gives confidence 
of the uh, stu for the student and and not only for the student also for the supervisor supervisor okay Okay, thank you, Margarita. Um, I think I, I just have now to look at the time. Uh, we have had Deborah introducing the, this question, and then three inter, um, and the people uh, um, from the panel discussing this. Uh, Nilsa is uh, our uh, second presenter. So, um, Nilsa, um, the second question we would like to address in this webinar is. Um, how can we help and support our PhD students in achieving their goals? Uh, so, um, how how can we help the PhD students uh, with with their needs uh, so that they feel um, uh, yeah helped with? Um, Nilsa, you prepared a, a, a separate PowerPoint set, and I see that it's uh, coming. So, uh, welcome also to this uh, uh, webinar. Oh, and okay. um, can you introduce mm. this question, please, for us? Thank you very much, Vim. Uh, yes, uh, I would like to uh, to say good morning to all, to Vim and all colleagues, and thank the invitation. Nilsa, we do not it's hear a you. pleasure for me to be here. It's my first time in this network, and I am very pleased. I would like also to apologize for the delay of sending my uh, PowerPoint, so but uh, I am yeah. in a conference and uh, it has not been very Now easy. we hear you. Um, um, this, just before starting, a very quick comment. It was very interesting to listen to the very well structured, from my point of view, uh, intervention of uh, Deborah. Uh, uh, the classification she made about the needs and the aspirations. And I really think that if I had more time, I would uh, structure my uh, the answers uh, to the question in terms of the needs and the aspirations of Deborah. So maybe we could do it in the future. Also, I think that my reflection covers some of the needs uh, Deborah uh, referred to. So, uh, can you pass to the second slide? Oh, yes. Uh, I have three starting points. Um, also, my talk, sorry, um, comes from my experience, long experience in supervising students. I have supervised more than 30 students and also from the literature. So, uh, I have um, three starting points which have been referred international, which is uh, PhD student is uh, often taken for granted. For example, uh, any scientific competent university teacher can and supervise PhD students. Um, I have two very recent um, references. I think that I believe that there are uh, some differences in the field of uh, the PhD. Uh, I believe that in some fields um, uh, the, the supervisors are more uh, more um, well uh, more uh, um, well informed or whatever I can say about uh, that the PhD education is very challenging and is, it should not uh, be taken for granted. Um, the other uh, starting point is that intellectual competencies of PhD students are not enough to a successful journey uh, because uh, you, um, this was believed uh, in the 16th and 70s, uh, but uh, um, obviously this does not uh, help us uh, very much if we say that the main reason is the PhD student. Uh, another uh, starting point, which is a complement of the previous one, is that uh, a complex interplay of individual, interpersonal, and contextual factors may influence a successful uh, PhD journey. Okay? Yes. Uh, so I have identified, also based on literature and my own experience, three kind of factors which may influence a successful PhD. First one is at a, a personal and individual level. 
for example, initial preparation of a PhD student, his or her commit commitment during the PhD process. So, so I this is one factor. Next slide, Another yes. one is uh, an institution at the institutional level. Uh, for example, if the institution, uh, there are some institutions like my university who have a, um, a school of a PhD school, uh, which is in charge of helping uh, PhD students and supervisors and so on. So there is a factor depending on the institution. There is at, uh, at last, uh, but not least. Um, there is the supervision role as a very important uh, factor uh, for uh, the success of a PhD student and I believe uh, the preparation of a, supervi a supervisor can um, cope with some of the needs uh, they were referred to. The last one, uh, I just uh, uh, make, uh, made a a table uh, referring some examples uh, of ways to support PhD students um, taking uh, on board the factors, the fa factors I have uh, referred to before. For example, at personal and individual level, um, maybe uh, there are some okay. uh, universities or some PhD programs uh, with uh, maybe they need to review uh, PhD uh, enrollment requirements. Um, this has happened with us in Aveiro uh, with some students mainly uh, coming from other countries uh, and uh, I think we need to be more um, to, to review the requirements. Um, this is one. Another one is that uh, we, we have been identified and in the literature that there are some needs, uh, formation needs in the PhD students when they enter and even when they uh, are developed their PhD students. One example is academic writing. Um, there are some PhD programs who, who, which have a curricular component like in my university and also in Kaunas Vitatus University and uh, the, we give a course uh, in the first year to PhD students about academic writing. So uh, this is uh, probably a way to uh, overcome some of the uh, need, some of the, no, the weak uh, aspects of the PhD students. Institutional support, and I have this experience at my university, it could be, for example, the definition and negotiation of what is expected from a PhD student, a kind of learning agreement, um, and also uh, the duties and the rights of a PhD student. I think this is also very important. Um, this is an example. We have uh, an agreement letter, for example, at uh, my university, which will be signed at the beginning by the uh, PhD student and supervisor concerning these duties and rights. Uh, the other factor, which is supervision support, um, I believe, and I have been working on this as well, that uh, uh, supervisors need to develop competencies uh, for this uh, task. It's not enough to be a researcher uh, to uh, be a good supervisor. And, uh, and for example, uh, nowadays it is quite common that PhD students need to be uh, very good in their research topic, but they also need to develop transversal competencies. And uh, I believe that some uh, supervisors don't have uh, sufficient formation on that. So I think uh, we can organize, and uh, there are many uh, examples of this in many universities, workshops uh, for to develop supervision competencies. Another one which maybe it's um, problematic in some institutional cultures, but we have it in Aveiro, and I think um, it works a little bit, is that at the end of each year of the PhD journal, uh, there is an evaluation um, of the supervision process. The PhD student has to write a report, the supervisor has to write a report, and then there is a commission which analyzes the report of uh, both actors. And uh, um, we, um, if, if there is a need to uh, think about ways to overcome some problems, we, uh, we do it. Uh, 
and when I say we, I say the, P, uh, the, the PhD um, school of, of the university. Uh, and obviously, uh, the evaluation should not be only at the end, but the, when we have uh, the solutions or uh, which may uh, incre improve the, the process of a PhD, uh, I think uh, we should monitor it along the year, the years. And that's all. Thank you very much. My contribution. Okay. Oh, thank you, Nilsa. Uh, yeah, that was a very interesting uh, contribution, and uh, it gives us uh, an interesting view on, on, on how we could support uh, students in, in uh, the PhD students. Uh, and I very much like the, the, the three levels that you indicated uh, oh, thank you, from personal, thank individual, you the uh, over supervisional support and, uh, to the institutional support. Um, yes, <laughs> I wonder what uh, our other panelists uh, are thinking about well, uh, your uh, ideas, and we can keep your slide here, I think. I these Maybe three, Antonio, you can start uh, uh, and, and give uh, your, your um, first uh, um, thoughts on uh, what, what that Nilsa just said. Would be helpful uh, in all of them. In fact, for instance, in regarding the first ones, um, Eden has already uh, thought about in the past, and uh, I believe that it's developing plans for providing workshops on academic writing as well. Academic writing yeah. specifically designed right. for the submission of papers to, to international conferences, for instance, which has a spe specific technique. Uh, or to write on, on uh, to submit uh, papers to jur international journals as well. So these kind of things could be uh, um, also um, helpful uh, when provided in collaboration with the institutions that are providing the PhDs themselves, um, or at least can be complementary as well. Um, um, regarding the institutional support, um, well, uh, there are things that, for instance, could be shared amongst institutions, uh, new topic, new emerging, emerging topics as um, ethical ones, for instance, ethical issues related to both support and, uh, and, um, and the research itself that could be also shared um, and some uh, um, support from the part of Eden could be provided as well. Apart from it, there is also uh, something that I'll address later on on my part, which is the um, capability of Eden to um, support institutions are pro by providing uh, um, uh, a possibility to, to compare uh, different uh, uh, um, techniques that are being used, different practices, and also different um, solutions that are developed in curricular wise, for instance. Regarding supervision support, NILSA is um, Nilsa is um, suggesting the idea of uh, having um, some kind of uh, training for superv supervisors, and this is something that could also be shared uh, at an international level, uh, mainly in the European level, but also um, um, broader than that. And we have here in our webinar uh, students, for instance, participating, which are not coming from uh, European universities and European countries, which is a very good sign. Um, indicator of the outreach of the organization uh, as well. So I would uh, think that this would also be a quite um, uh, interesting field to work uh, for Eden to work with um, to um, to provide uh, support to supervisors, um, sharing, uh, creating. Uh, well, for instance, uh, within the uh, uh, the fellows network or or uh, um, other, other uh, activities that even could um, develop uh, on this um, aspect as well. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Uh, no, I mean, uh, in order not to spend a lot of time as I did when you asked my first, okay. uh, the first question. Thank you, Antonio. Just to say that I think uh, it's a very good, Albert, uh, do you have some thoughts that you'd like to share on this with uh, the one that Deborah issue, or, presented uh, uh, at the beginning? Uh, probably this perspective is m much Albert? more... Um, 
macro or meso, the one of Deborah there? is much more micro, micro in the sense that they is much more involved in their very okay. personal particular problems that well, a PhD student can have. So the only thing I would uh, add here is this idea of prob probably we we should or we could, we, we do that in some extent at Eden, but looking for more partnerships or sponsorships to foster and funding, fostering and yeah. funding uh, PhD students' needs in, in this sense. Uh, I think it will be very welcome for from the students. And on the other hand, considering what in, at least in our country, the PhD schools at the universities are doing, is to support also the supervisors in the sense that giving some tools to the supervisors in order to make their job easier. Uh, absolutely, and thank you very much, Nina. So it's very, very complimentary to, um, as Albert said, the, the micro-personal needs approach yep. that, that I took. Okay, thank you, um, Albert. Definitely um, on the, and the, 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 the final panelist, Deborah, uh, would you, would you like to comment on this? Uh, would you feel helped with uh, the suggestions that uh, Nilsa uh, made here on this uh, slide? And it was so useful. Um, and one of the things we did there was actually academic writing groups where um, uh, we were exchanging pieces of writing amongst ourselves without the, um, the instructor's support. Um, and that's one of the things that I think Eden might support is, um, uh, is, is helping groups of um, students who are focusing on similar topics or who are at some similar levels in, in their research. Uh, to uh, participate in an academic writing group. Um, I know it sounds like extra work for us, but really the benefits are um, well worth it uh, when you want to um, uh, explain your research clearly and, and get it in a public or publishable format. Um, I think some of the things that Nielsen mentioned, and I think Albert also touched on this, as did Antonio, um, I think we need to distinguish, and here I'm putting my Eden hat on rather than my PhD student hat, between the things that the institutions should be doing and what Eden, how Eden can support the institutions. Um, and as Albert said, the doctoral schools are already or should already be providing support for supervisors. Um, but maybe within Eden there's a scope for uh, workshops for um, uh, the professional development of uh, researchers who are taking on supervision um, activities. Um, so yes, all of these are very, very useful. Um, and uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Um, I think we can now move to uh, to the next uh, question, which is uh, in in a way uh, a bit similar. Christa, can I, uh, Christina, can I just ask you to upload the the original uh, PowerPoint set, please? Uh, yep. Yep. Um, actually, we are. Uh, now into the, the, the third question. Uh, I made a mistake here. Uh, we should now be at the question number three, uh, which is um, how can we as a community uh, talk? Uh, yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. How can we as a community empower uh, our PhD students in their research uh, process? One, one of the levels that, that uh, um, uh, Nilsa was was uh, addressing is the yeah, larger I, institutional I, I, context, and uh, but we could also even yeah, enlarge yeah, that uh, context they, they, to a network they, like Eden, they, uh, I think. Um, so Margarita prepared a couple of slides uh, to introduce that topic, uh, and I will move back uh, to the start of her presentation. Um, Margarita, can you uh, introduce uh, us to this uh, part, please? Uh, are much more broader. 
and uh, um, Eden already uh, doing something, not something, a lot. It's a platform where research and good practice already meet. Um, and and um, I like um, uh, in the uh, in part when participating in conferences and research workshop that it's very much multidisciplinary approach. That here comes uh, doctoral students, researchers, uh, um, scholars, and practitioners uh, um, from different disciplines. You know, from psychology, informatics. Uh, uh, education, uh, sociology. This is very great uh, experience, and that they are coming from the uh, different countries with different experiences, also from all over the world. So, um, so it gives the broad field for for our research in this area in the distance and e-learning area. But, but what can we do more as the community? Of course, uh, um, when I also like uh, uh, Professor Albert told to separate finances from the ideas, but, uh, and, and uh, when thinking that reality, every organization has quite limited resources. And with uh, resources, what is already exists, it's easy to, to do something or to think in, in, on this idea. I think it uh, uh, would be worth to have some pool of summaries of doctoral um, dissertation, thesis uh, um, in the field, so that the new doctoral students, future doctoral students, could, uh, um, could find them. Also, it would be very useful to have links of ongoing research. Sometimes uh, <laughs> we don't know what's going in the field and try to do something very similar, but, but uh, yes, it, it, would, it would be useful. And also, uh, there is going a lot of research, a lot of new dissertations, so, so maybe mapping thematic areas in the field, in the field also would be, uh, would be very useful for researchers. So, yeah. <clears throat> and empower, for empower researchers in the research pro process, also mm, not only, uh, you know, doctoral students now I uh, um, think, but, but these uh, supervisors, uh, because uh, supervisors uh, also like PhD students, they need, they need support. They need support, and um, and this support could be, uh, you know, from not only discussions with experts from the uh, the world, from the uh, peer um, students, but also from the uh, co supervisors. And uh, uh, in our country, for example, we are very open to have co supervision uh, supervision for doctoral students, and this is very valuable. Because of uh, uh, because of different uh, point of view on the same things, you know, and it's in in this technology is age uh, digital age. It's very easy to communicate using um, technologies doc for doctoral student and the co supervisor and also supervisor. Uh, I think we can help um, our uh, students and uh, ourselves um, through collaboration of different doctoral schools, because sometimes this um, in cooperation, what happens uh, in research uh, workshops, uh, uh, it uh, really raises some innovations and cooperation is very, of all doctoral schools would be very important. Um, I would um, stress methodological innovations in research because uh, uh, they are coming every year, almost every year, new innovations. So this methodological innovation, they could be somehow stressed or somehow provided into the 
scope of, of um, Eden Network. And um, also it's very important, it looks for me very important, new competences uh, who I needed for future students. I didn't see now my, sli uh, my slides, but, <laughs> but uh, I hope you can see. I didn't, uh, okay, okay. So, what, uh, yeah. Um, so what is the new competences for future research and uh, uh, research for future researchers? And I think uh, uh, it's um, important for Eden, for maybe future Eden activities. So, uh, and uh, uh, already one year ago, European Commission uh, <coughs> declared the uh, new document about the providing researchers with skills and competences they need to practice open science. So this open science uh, represents an approach to research that is collaborative, transparent and accessible. So a wide range of activities comes under the umbrella of open science, including open um, access publishing that uh, usually doctoral students say, says, stress this. Open data, open network, open peer review, and open education. A driver for open science is improvement and transparency and validity of research, as well as public ownership of science, particularly uh, that which is publicly funded. So, and, and this um, document uh, from European Commission uh, gives us, um, um, gives perspective where to go, recommendations, how to introduce open science. So, uh, when we're talking about uh, um, Eden Network, I, I think uh, it would be very um, good space to promote this idea. So to um, promote awareness about open science. So it means uh, policy initiatives, institutional and funding agency guidelines, as well as broader value of open science practices at the personal, professional and societal level. And the next one, uh, training of researchers training of uh, doctoral students, um, training regarding open science access publishing, open data and data management, professional research conduct, and broader citizen science skills. This could be, could be you, you know, new lines to help researchers. I do not say only doctoral students, but every uh, from us need this, such training and uh, so so it's my idea for, yeah. for okay thank you margarita uh, that's a very interesting contribution uh, both on on uh, well first of all starting at at uh, the support level uh, in in general uh, and then uh, giving that particular focus on uh, on open science and uh, and everything that is related to that uh, so thank you for that um can I ask Nilsa uh, if, if you would like to give a first reaction on uh, what Margarita just said? Mm, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Margarita. It was, from my point of view, a very interesting um, uh, contribution. Uh, myself, as an outsider of uh, Eden, uh, I'm sorry, but it's my first time here, I can see uh, a be very very big potential of uh, Ivan uh, to uh, deal with the, the topic of this uh, web seminar. Uh, I just uh, uh, want to reinforce uh, by giving uh, three examples of initiatives that I think even uh, maybe has already done but uh, uh, one uh, is uh, concerns the micro level and uh, I have the opportunity to thank Alberto about this uh, uh, ma macro, meso and micro and talking about for instance pastoral needs. Uh, 
um, since when I, I did my PhD in the 80s in the uh, United Kingdom, and we had uh, meetings sharing, uh, only PhD uh, mainly at the beginning, where we were sharing our problems. And at that time, it was very important for me, to re when I was defining my research problem, to realize that uh, the PhD students in the last year also had this problem and could overcome it. So maybe, um, even oh, uh, could, can organize the kind of uh, these forums uh, for sharing uh, PhD problems and to overcome this loneliness. Uh, 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 concerning the academic needs, um, I don't know if you do it, I'm sorry, but it could also be important, for example, to select some research topics, uh, PhD research topics, and ask PhD students of different universities and countries to uh, present their work. Uh, and I think this can help uh, also uh, overcome the loneliness and also to uh, get feedback from a uh, uh, greater uh, community. The other one is obviously Eden can organize seminars. Um, about uh, this uh, methodology, innovations, and so on. So, uh, I really believe in Eden <laughs> contribution to this uh, uh, team. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nils, and thank you for your belief in our network. So, uh, happy to hear that. Um, I think we have to move on uh, with, with the next question. Uh, time is flying, unfortunately, so I don't have time to, to get all the other panelists to react on what Margarita said, but uh, in the next intervention, you can certainly come back to, to some of her thoughts. Um, I, I apologize for uh, the time. Um, the next question we have, well, third question we already tackled. Uh, we are moving to the fourth question. Um, how can we offer uh, a platform uh, within the Eden network to test uh, new ideas or to share findings of the students. Uh, I think this is more about how the, 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 the a concrete action, uh, how to involve the network Eden uh, as a platform for our research PhDs, uh, PhD students. Um, and the one who prepared that subject is Antonio. Uh, Antonio, can you start uh, sharing your ideas on this question, please? Well, thank you, thank you, Vim. And uh, well, I would li uh, like to start by apologizing for not uh, sharing with you a PowerPoint presentation, but <laughs> the topic uh, uh, was a little bit difficult to uh, to put in, in uh, well, to organize the ideas into a, a PowerPoint presentation. I, I think it's best, based on what we have already discussed in the three previous questions, to um, uh, elaborate from that. I would divide here um, these, uh, the answer to this question into four different perspectives. So uh, from the perspective that of the PhD student and uh, their needs and aspirations, as uh, Deborah started to uh, present, from the perspective of the supervisor, which has already been addressed both by Niels and by Margarita as well, but also I would uh, add two additional um, perspectives the perspective of the institutions, um, starting by the institutional, um, by the Eden institutional membership, so by the members, uh, institutional members of the, of the Eden network, but also by institutions uh, at large. Uh, and additionally, um, the, what I would call the academic and professional community. In Eden, uh, they are, uh, apart from institutional members, there are also uh, individual members, uh, over 1,000. So um, there is a, a very large community represented uh, within the network that represents actually the actual practitioners and the actual researchers. And so uh, uh, starting from these, um, well, four different perspectives, um, well, um, Deborah has already uh, mentioned that uh, from the student perspective, there are um, a number of elements which are, in a way, in a way uh, needed. Um, some elements related to support in terms of dissemination, some elements related to support in terms, for instance, of uh, funding, of material support, and also elements related to uh, what we could call a kind of a cultural um, environment, so the integration within the community itself. Uh, when I commented uh, Deborah's um, presentation, 
I, I already mentioned that uh, from my point of view here, uh, what the students can benefit from it, uh, the Eden activities is this holistic approach that uh, association can bring mm -hmm. to the in to the whole research um, process. So starting from um, from before the research it, it, it really happens. So starting from the point in which a student selects a university, selects a program, um, tries to find um, uh, the best um, the best institutional approach to um, organize its own research uh, ambitions. On the other hand, when it starts its development, so um, this need for sharing ideas with other fellow um, uh, students, or international students in this case, but also national uh, from other institutions, also the need to test if their own ideas are uh, uh, innovative, if they are really following the, the emergent topics, to get, have a grasp of what is the development of the field. This can be uh, done uh, in, the, in the midst of the hidden activities, being the conferences, being uh, the, the research workshops, uh, being um, other additional activity, uh, well, this mention activities that it presents. Also the possibility to publish, to publish on your order to publish um, uh, in the conferences itself. Um, but apart from it, there is also this um, emerging activity, which is the um, this uh, network related to the support of uh, um, young researchers, to the support of uh, PhD students uh, themselves. So Eden has a, a, a way of uh, addressing different needs uh, within the, the, um, the research process. Uh, one additional need is also how it can um, the the research can have an impact, and on that sense, for instance, when conducting surveys, it's important to find people that would like to, who would be able to respond to the surveys. This is a very uh, material need that sometimes uh, we we have to address within the the, the super, uh, supervision or the conducting of a, a PhD research. Well, having the access of such a large network as um, the the NEP. Or the fellows with the network, or so within the Eden community, this can be uh, very helpful. Also, the possibility to um, conduct, uh, which is something that we haven't been addressing uh, so far, which is the possibility for a student to conduct a, a research, well, an experiment that can be also replicated in a different environment than the one that is controlled by uh, by the student. So to have, for instance, two or three uh, experiments being uh, held simultaneously in different countries, because the Eden network would allow for the student to uh, to test it in, in, in such a way, or to share with other students developing similar research in different countries um, um, the, the, the findings and results. Well, uh, Margarita has point uh, has already brought this issue of the open science movement. Um, we have to reorganize, uh, in, as, as I see it, reorganize the entire understanding of the, of the research process, and also in this case, more particularly of the of the production of uh, of, the, uh, of the PhD research. Uh, in this broader framework of open science. Well, in the case of the Open University of Portugal, we are just um, uh, we have just developed a new PhD program which exactly focus on this, on the combination of open education, open and network education with open science, uh, the open science methodology. So, in this sense, the um, the possibility to share and to conduct not just in, um, uh, open research, so internationally shared research, but also um, to be able to test the, the ideas, to share the data and the findings, this is really important these days. An another important aspect for the students is the possibility that has already been addressed of uh, um, uh, getting um, uh, access to funding, getting access to some kind of support, financial support. Of course, the Eden Network can uh, not necessarily provide it on its own, but um, um, well, organize the, 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 the response uh, for, for that, uh, of course, to work with in collaboration with, with um, uh, additional institutions, with, uh, with other associations, with foundations that could help uh, achieve this, this goal. From the supervisor's point of view, we have already addressed it in the previous um, um, question. Um, how to how can we actually 
use the Eden network as a platform for, for testing of new ideas and sharing findings. This, ha this can be done from the point of the view of the research that's being, that is being conducted by the, the, the student itself, but also in terms of the supervisor. How can they uh, um, improve their uh, supervision techniques How can they, and methodology? How can they uh, share their own experiences, learn from each other, to compare international, uh, internationally at the international level, to compare uh, their own practices and to improve them? and also to uh, conduct something that haven't been addressed so far, which is international mobility. This is really crucial at this stage as well. So the open uh, uh, framework that we've been discussing uh, from the point, of view of the, the point of view of the student should also be um, uh, applied from a, supervi a supervisor's uh, point of view. Getting now, uh, because time is short. <laughs> yeah, I think we have to to do uh, maybe one final thought, Antonio, uh, because we have to move on. Uh, I think. Um, just on the uh, very briefly on the institutional level and on the academic uh, professional community. Regarding the institutional level, it's very important to for institutions also to have the possibility to um, share their own experiences in terms of how uh, their own models for the organization of PhDs are working. And this is very important. Also as a platform to, um, uh, to disseminate its own um, provision and to be able to um, uh, recruit uh, students from different countries and from, from different regions as well. Uh, well, I would say more than this, but anyway, just being to be, to be brief. As for the community yeah. itself, uh, how can the community um, um, con also use Eden as a platform, uh, in this case, for the testing of uh, ideas and findings. Because it's important, uh, and this is a critical element, that the research, and specifically the, P the research conducted uh, in the framework of, of the PhD programs, should be transferred. Um, and so that the transfer of knowledge and, in and innovation is assured. And so it, it is very important that this uh, cycle is completed and the research actually uh, helps, is, is helpful to the transformation of the practices. And so in order to, to for this um, research to reach its target, to be able to transform practices, to improve them, it's important to have an associations, organizations that can um, um, put together the, the community of academics and professionals, in this case, the community of practitioners with the findings of research. And even can, of course, do it in different ways. Could be about, uh, could be, uh, of course, in terms of dissemination, but more than that, also of sharing um, uh, findings and, uh, and data from the research, it's research itself. Um, well, uh, this is just in a, in a kind of a brief yeah. way. Um, uh, my understanding of the the, um, the response to this question, which in, my, in just to, to finish up, we have to, to also to address it from a multiple uh, perspective um, point of view. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio. There were a lot of ideas in your intervention. Uh, not only uh, how, how Eden could uh, offer a platform to, to, to students, uh, but also to supervisors and, and to the research community in general. Uh, that was very uh, rewarding. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have time for one intervention, uh, and I would like to go to Margarita and, and, and just ask if she has some comments on what Antonio just said. Uh, Margarita? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, thank you for giving me the floor, but, um, and I agree with Antonio completely, you know, <laughs> just, okay. but I see that Deborah would like to something, some, uh, something, so better give her a word. <laughs> ah, but I thought that Deborah wanted to intervene with, uh, ah, yeah, okay, right after Antonio's intervention. Okay, sorry, yeah, Deborah, please. Uh, Okay, thank you, uh, and 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 thank you, uh, Antonio and uh, Margarita, for your uh, uh, suggestions. I'll, I'll be very brief here, uh, but the the um, uh, the thing that came to mind was hearing about open science, and I think open science and PhD research is a whole topic in itself. 
And um, in fact, at a previous PhD symposium, we did a workshop on open science, and it was an eye-opener. Uh, we were invited to ask ourselves questions on how open we were about our research, the issues relating to opening up our data when we're PhD students and we want to be in our niche. Um, we shared horror stories about PhD students having had their topic and their data stolen and published by other people. So I think it's definitely something to put on the table and, and discuss. And what was interesting there was that our positions as doctoral students evolved throughout the process of the workshop. And we gradually opened up and we identified very clearly where we could be more open and where we still needed to be quite protective. And um, the other issue um, was about collaborative research, again, linked to the, the open research. And again, I think this is a challenge because the PhD is a very, very individual um, exercise. So it could help the whole loneliness um, aspect. Um, and I know some doctoral students are doing PhDs as part of a wider project where they are collaborating with, uh, uh, with other more established researchers, and that helps the publication side. So I'd just like to put that on the table, maybe for a, a specific topic of conversation that we could have. And thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, I think it's a very important question uh, or a very important topic you raised. Uh, and as you already said, that in itself it's a research uh, topic. Uh, so maybe, um, well, time is flying, unfortunately. Uh, so um, maybe we could address this issue in the next occasion, if you don't mind. Uh, but but it's a, a point is very well taken. And I think that uh, you raised a very important uh, question here. Um, but I'm afraid that we now have to go to the very last question of this webinar, um, which is uh, a bit the, uh, reversing the the, uh, the 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 viewpoint. Uh, and uh, rather than we as Eden offering a network for our PhD students uh, to support them, uh, we are thinking: what can we learn from our PhD students, uh, and how can we, uh, yeah, benefit from? Uh, the findings of their work. Uh, how can we grow as a network uh, in, 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 well, call it uh, uh, an organizational competence, let's say. Um, and I think that Albert uh, will be the right person to address that question um, first. Albert? Thank you, Wim. Uh, well, uh, I would like to highlight that we moved from a very first level initial needs at the very beginning to very complex yeah. issues in the last uh, intervention. So I think it's very clear that we are uh, coping with a very big or big range of needs and developments. So, so we probably would need to identify which is the stage in which we are currently in order to be really uh, aware about the fact what we can do at this moment and what can be done later after several uh, activities and, and, and policies on that. Well, regarding the question about how can our network Eden benefit from their work, I think that the first thing to say is that good news is that we are talking about them. So, they do exist for us. And I mean that in, in, in several uh, associations uh, regarding education, regarding any kind of, of topic, usually they don't look at the young people who are researching in their particular fields and they consider those kind of people that they will come later where they be, when they will become researchers, adult researchers, and so on. One of the reasons is that probably some of these researchers are already adults. But if we consider uh, not the, 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 the adultness on the age of people, but on the experience on the research and how they have become researchers, I think that they are young people in the, in the field of research. So this is something that should make us reflect on the fact that they are potential people that can uh, improve our, our work. So what I think is that I have tried to summarize in five words what I think that uh, we can benefit from them. One is knowing. 
knowing about what they are doing, which is the research they are doing, what are the problems that are, they are facing. And then we can identify this kind of research all over Europe and other parts of the world. So knowing. And the second one related to this first one is mapping. So to have an, a great idea on knowing what they are doing, we can map what are the trends in research related to our topics uh, related to online and distance education, how they are evolving, where they are situated, in which institutions, who are the supervisors, so how we are working on research. The third one is suggesting. When we know and we map the research that has been doing, we can suggest new ideas, we can suggest new problems to be faced, we can suggest even collaborate with them, we can provide our support if, if it's needed. The fourth word is acting. So what can we do? Could we co-supervise some research projects? Could we participate in such a kind of webinars as today in which we can provide some uh, experience at least to the research students, the PhD students and so on. And the, the, the fifth word is collaborating, not only with the, research, with the young researchers, the PhD students, but also with those researchers that are supervisors, the research groups that are working. So at the end, and summarizing these five five uh, words, knowing, mapping, suggesting, acting, collaborating, I think that the summary is advancing. And all this can make it an advanced, advanced in research especially, uh, especially showing how quality and leading age research can be done online at a distance too. When talking about the needs of the students, the PhD students, we said, uh, or Deborah mentioned, uh, to try to overcome loneliness and so on, for instance. When we are talking about uh, creating platforms for supporting this, we are talking about giving the opportunity to the students to not to be alone at a distance. This is something that we always say when talking about distance education or online education, but we can also uh, uh, contribute to this, from this point of view, to research, in particular to PhD research. So showing the others, showing the community how quality living its research can be done online or at a distance. So at the end, uh, a benefit that we can have from uh, this uh, from the work of the PhD students is that we need people working intensively in research projects. They will provide prestige and reputation to Eden and also capacity to have influence on the future of the society. So for instance, uh, and related when we talked about open science, I think that we can even create a kind of open database with data from the PhD students for further research, so they can provide new data in, to which we can work over that in order to advance on the research. The overall summary is that the PhD students are our future. If Eden would like to think on the future and overcome people that are currently in the association, as me, as all of us here, we should think on the PhD students that will be our future. So, maybe thinking on this, we can uh, define much better a policy for research in Eden that will include, because I think that this would include a policy for PhD students too. It doesn't mean that Eden is not doing a lot of things for that. It is. But to think on a policy for research could probably make, able, uh, make us able to uh, integrate the different kind of activities we are doing 
and to uh, lead them or uh, align them uh, to a final uh, goal. And I think that this will be also a contribution of the PhD students' work because they will give us the opportunity to do this. I think that in order not to be longer, uh, these are the ideas that I would like to share with all of you. Thank you very much, Albert. Uh, and in a way, you're already sort of starting to summarize this webinar for all of us. Uh, so I'm very glad uh, that uh, we uh, were waiting for your contribution to the end of this webinar. Uh, but as we started with Deborah as, as PhD student, and then I asked her you to, to, uh, to, to give comments as the first one, now I would like to, to ask uh, the opposite way around, uh, Deborah, to, to react on what you just said. Uh, Deborah, do you have some, some uh, remarks on uh, what Albert said? Uh... Okay, well, how can I disagree with my supervisor? <laughs> um... I knew that this was a difficult one, but... Uh... No, I, 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 like, I very much like the way um, that uh, it, it's been framed in, in the five uh, key words of knowing, mapping, suggesting, acting, and collaborating. Um, and, and I do appreciate the, uh, the, the, the way of looking at it from, from, from both ways. Um, I think that the future agenda is the most important one. And I think that is very much linked to mapping the trends um, and supporting uh, PhD students uh, at all stages of the journey, from finding a topic, finding a supervisor, finding um, uh, knowing what the future agenda is. I would also um, like to make the link with the um, the Eden Fellows Council, which I know has just uh, started, and this might be um, something for the, the Fellows Council to look at as well, because we are looking at, 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 at future scenarios there. Um, but I will leave the floor for winding up, uh, because I think that there's a, a final conclusion to be made to, yep. to the webinar. Okay. Uh, the next slide in my presentation was, was lessons learned, and, and originally we had the idea that uh, every uh, panelist uh, could contribute and at least share one lesson learned, um, but the time is flying, and, and uh, we would like to, to give the floor to Irina in a minute uh, to, uh, to, to, to present what Eden is actually doing uh, or wants to do what is on the research agenda for the organization uh, as a let's say, a conclusion of this workshop. Um, but if, if I may, uh, I would like to, to, to just say something here as, a, as, as the moderator of this webinar. Um, when we were preparing the webinar uh, and, and uh, defining the topic, uh, we phrased it as a, as a question. Uh, and uh, it was, how can the Eden Network support PhD students and research? Uh, and it was striking to see for me uh, that all the presenters, all the panelists, um, they, they, in a way, they, they answered the question, but in a very, very research-minded way. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very pleased, uh, and, and I would like to thank uh, all the panelists uh, that uh, they, they would, uh, that, that this, the, the, the question uh, which was on the table uh, has uh, sparked some, some interesting, uh, even research-minded ways of, of thinking and reflecting on it. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, and, Having said this, uh, I would give now the floor to Irina, as, uh, our president, uh, to, uh, yeah, to tell us a little bit about uh, Eden's research portfolio. Thank you very much, William. Thanks all to all of you. Uh, actually, uh, your reflections, your ideas uh, are absolutely appreciated. Uh, the context uh, uh, when we um, uh, thought to have uh, such event in European Distance Learning Week as concluding and summarizing, but uh, one of the key uh, focused uh, events, virtual events dedicated for research and how Eden can support uh, PhD researchers, PhD schools and uh, supervisors. Um, this idea came from preparation in Eden Governance uh, the research portfolio. And uh, Joseph Maria Duarte, uh, Eden Vice President for Research from the Open University of Catalonia, he unfortunately is not able to join us today, but we work in the team very closely. And I will present very briefly a, a, the slides prepared by himself in three items. 
So this is actually the steps that have been taken before Barcelona Research Workshop already and all your contributions, reflections will be taken now to feedback uh, these initial ideas and to update them with new actions and planning. So three main areas, Eden members, current members and future members, research support, analysis of research trends, and the thought item communities of practices. So just as uh, it was shared during today's webinar, uh, research trends, um, sorry, I think we skipped uh, the first slide, it in members research ongoing Arina, we do not hear you anymore. In research must be supported uh, in, uh, in in Eden platform. So research events in Okay. No, it's yes, not we do hear that. you again. Can you hear me now? Can you hear it's okay. me? Okay. Okay, sorry. So PhD symposium uh, PhD symposium, symposium for students, you see the first line which is uh, actually already implemented action in Barcelona, but we also think we should have sessions in annual conferences. Uh, we started them uh, with the topic on how to develop good research papers and I think this will be feedbacking into the needs also indicated today in the chat that one of the challenges is to publish good research papers and Eden community has experts and researchers who are able to support them. Eden as a platform for doctoral students, um, we think about collaborating with Eden members on the levels of PhD schools, PhD programs. We think to organize short online courses, short uh, courses during events and also webinars. And I also was very happy to see the note today here in the chat that such webinars are very useful for PhD students in terms of discussing how to support them, but I think we should go also for thematic webinars. Eden has a journal, Eurodel, but also works with other research journals and organizes sessions with them. So PhD students will be invited to these sessions. And the global network and collaboration with other doctoral schools and consortia definitely is on the agenda. Research trend analysis is acknowledged as one of the most important activities in research areas and doctoral schools uh, networks today. So we think Eden is uh, really should be responsible for identifying the most relevant e-learning research trends and uh, internal qualitative research to define these trends already has been initiated by the Council of Eden Fellows as uh, today we heard from Deborah, Albert and Antonio as well. And we think that PhD symposia together with support, together with Eden uh, events and meetings with PhD students might help them and support them in topics uh, definition and research areas definition. We also think that um, a, a lot of initiatives also identified among uh, your um, remarks today, for example, collaboration of PhD students in methodological um, uh, workshops, in empirical research, in, uh, let's say, academic writing sessions, uh, might be organized under the idea of communities of practices. We think uh, today network has a new concept, the concept of 21st century, we may call it networking. Uh, it is more open, it is more flexible, but we would like to choose the name for this activity, uh, developing and supporting communities of practices within Eden and uh, promoting new communities of practices according uh, to research trends and topics and we think to open the debates and disseminate the results of research of open debates uh, in the network. So these are three very, very brief um, uh, strategic actions suggested by Joseph 
and uh, will, they will be implemented and promoted, but I, as I told you, they will be updated also with your reflections. And this is a very nice uh, picture from Barcelona. Uh, these actions have been kicked off very successfully. I'm sorry not to see all uh, this, these people today in the webinar, but I know why, because they, they are all very busy. And I think at least part of them is here. And my last slide is that after every event, we think we must come with some kind of summary statements like we did after Barcelona, but I, I'm sure you have received them. So this is all for me, and actually it's... Okay, thank you, Irina. And um, I think that uh, our time is uh, up now. Um, this was a, a very uh, interesting uh, way, I think, of uh, sharing uh, ideas on, on the topic, uh, how Eden and PhD students and research uh, can help each other. Uh, it was a pleasure to be the moderator of this session. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. I was very pleased with all the panelists uh, introducing uh, a, a certain aspect perspective on uh, the topic on the table. Uh, thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Margarita. Thank you, Debra. Thank you, Nilsa. And thank you, Irina, of course, uh, for your final words. Uh, because this is on the agenda of the Eden Network, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, we will continue along these lines and uh, with all the ideas raised today, uh, I think there is still a lot of work ahead of us, uh, but I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, we will make it. Um, and as Albert said, our PhD students are our future. So we are very much looking forward to all the PhDs that were participating in the seminar to see their work, to see how they are growing as researchers and uh, to see them in our network uh, of Eden. Thank you very much. Have a nice Friday afternoon and a good weekend to all of you. Thank you for the moderation, Bim. My pleasure. See all of you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. And thank you, Dream, as well. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure.